In this occasion, we'll be presenting an economic convergence model based on labor productivity and employment rates in Central America. Historically, in Central America, there have been several failed attempts of integration. First, with the Central American Federation, and then the Central American Common Market, and some other public policies. Therefore, justifying the need to explain the reasons why it hasn't been possible to achieve convergence. Our starting point was proposing the hypothesis that the lack of economic convergence is due to the difference in labor productivity and employment rate in the region. Our economic trip analysis made on this paper is based on data from 1960 to 2012, provided by the Extended World Frame Table, version 4, for the following countries Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, Nicaragua, and Costa Rica. A large data will evidence the behavior of the variables in a better way. And we choose 1960 as the starting year because it is in this year the process of economic integration begins. The gross domestic product GDP per capita is defined as the production of an entire country distributed among the total population. This is an ideal measurement of the weight of the population in the GDP. If we define the GDP per capita, as sigma, when multiplied by the number of employees as a mathematical artifice divided by itself, it is possible to restructure the formal definition of the GDP so that it is expressed by the labor productivity and the employment rate. In that way, if we want to estimate a measurement of convergence, in this particular case the day of index, the convergence of the GDP per capita will be explained by the Dale Index of the Labor Productivity and a pseudo Dale Index of the Employment Rate. Based on the mathematical ana analysis, it is possible to state the following model. As the dependent variable, the Dale Index of the GDP per capita, which will be explained by a constant and two independent variables. The Dale Index of the Labor Productivity and the Dale Index of the Employment Rate. We execute the regression of the model on EViews with YH as the GDP per capita, YL as the labor productivity, and LH as the employment rate, and obtain the following data. We have an F statistic of 34.17 with a probability of 0 0.000, which allows us to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the entire model is significant. Also, the independent variables are significant on their own because of the t statistic that they show. The R square is 0.57%, showing that 50% of the model is explained by the independent variables. And we can also see a Durbin Watson statistic that is of 0.65, which gives an early evidence of serial correlation on the model. Now we have to run the normality test Harkevera in which the null hypothesis is that there is normality. As you can see, the probability is of 26%, which allows us to accept the null hypothesis. Also, we can see that the coefficient of Harkevera is of 2.69. And as we know, uh, the closer this coefficient is from 0, then the more normal the model is. And also we can see that the histogram of residuals, that it has a tendency of a showing a form of a Gauss bell, which also is an evidence of normality. It is mandatory to check if the model has the following problems. Serial correlation. There are two tests that we run to evaluate serial correlation in the residuals the LM test or the Bruch 
Godfrey test with two legs. And this test shows a probability of 0 0.0000, which allows us to um, reject the null hypothesis that there, there isn't zero correlation in model, which means that there is zero correlation in model. And the other test is the correlogram of procedurals. with 24 lags on this case and this shows that there is correlation on the first lag so we do have uh, evidence of zero correlation on this model heteroscedasticity the null hypothesis for these tests are that there is homo homoscedasticity meaning the inexistence of heteroscedasticity in the model. The tests are Brush, Pega, and Godfrey. And on this test, we have a probability of 0.0026, which um, allows us to reject the null hypothesis and to conclude that there is heteroscedasticity on this model. The other test is the Glesser test that also shows a really low probability which allows us to again reject the null hypothesis and to conclude that there is heteroscedasticity on this model. And the last test and the most powerful one is the white test with cross terms. This also shows a really low probability which allows us to reject the null hypothesis and to finally conclude that this model has um, a, an heteroscedasticity problem. After running the test, we conclude that the estimators of this model are not efficient but they are consistent and unbiased. Ergo, they don't have a minimum variance. So it is important to correct these problems, the serial correlation and the heteroscedasticity. The first solution that comes to mind is to paradise. And in order to do this, we have to evaluate the residuals of the model using a graph. In this graph, we see that the residuals do not show any sign of tendency or periods, so this option is not the most adequate. Another method of correction is the autoprogressive integrated moving average model, ARMA. The main interest of this prognostic model is analyzing the probabilistic properties of the economic time series of their own. The autoprogressive R1 it states that the pronostic value of y in a period t is simply some proportion of its value in a period t minus 1, plus a random disturbance in the period t. Ergo, the values of y are expressed around their mean value. Therefore, when we implement the model autoregressive R1 to our econometric model, we can observe the changes suffered by it improving in a great way the beginning model. As we can see, we have um, an F statistic of 193, which is far more superior than the 34 we had on our previous model. Um, also, the independent variables are still significant and the R square is so much um, higher now. It's of 92%, which means that 92% of the model is explained by the independent variables. And we have the Durbin Watson statistic of 
which is really close from 2, and that means that the zero correlation problem has almost disappeared. Now that we have corrected our original model with the auto progressive for 1, it is important to run the previous test for normality, serial correlation, and atherosclerosticity to see if the model has actually improved. We have the test for normality. The Harkemera coefficient is almost zero, so that means that the probability of this model to be normal is way higher, and we can see the probability is of um, 99%. And also the histogram of residuals shows a really good <coughs> bell-shaped form, which can confirm that the model is normal. We have the zero correlation LM test with a probability of 0 0.12, which allows us to accept the null hypothesis of no zero correlation in the model. Also, with the um, correlogram of residuals, we see that there isn't a sign of zero correlation until the lab 22. And that means that even if there is a slight problem of zero correlation, it's not very important. So we can conclude that the model does not have zero correlation. The Birch Fagan Godfrey test for atherosclerosticity uh, shows a probability of 23%, which um, allows us to accept the null hypothesis that there is homoscedasticity on the model. The Glexa test um, shows a probability of 14%, which also allows us to accept the null hypothesis and to conclude that there is not an heteroscedasticity problem on this test. But the Y test for heteroscedasticity shows a probability of 0 0.0040, which does not allow us to accept a null hypothesis. And this means that this test is showing that the model has a problem of heteroscedasticity. We said before that this test is the most powerful one. So, we can explain this result because of all the differences on GDP and in the labor productivity and the employment rate that these Central American countries show within each other. One example of this is um, Costa Rica, which has a GDP that is way higher than the rest of the countries. So we believe that this problem of heteroscedasticity is deep within the data and the reality and not so much within the model. We conclude that the problems of serial correlation and heteroscedasticity have disappeared with the exception of the one test which is the most powerful and keeps showing an heteroscedasticity problem which could be because of the strong differences between countries in terms of GDP, meaning that this problem is inherent to the data and the reality of the region, reinforcing the conclusions and results of the model. Based on the obtained results in this paper, it is possible to accept the null hypothesis. Demonstrating that the countries in Central America have entered in a divergence process over time instead of showing convergence. Also, both independent variables, labor productivity and employment rate, are able to explain the divergence or inequality 
and the GDP per capita in Central America. However, the labor productivity shows a larger influence or weight over the GDP per capita. Lastly, one of the reasons that have caused the process of divergence in the region is the palpable economic differences that exist, mainly in Costa Rica, a country that clearly diverges the most in all the variables. Thank you so much.